What's up world? Michael EJ here coming to you with another video in the field of finance, business, life. Now I'm gonna come with you with a crazy idea. A crazy experiment that's going on in different parts of the world that I think the United States seriously need to consider. And that is universal basic income. In my opinion, one of the few ideas out there that can please both the left and the right. Now, for those who don't know, the idea is just you take a portion of those tax dollars that you pay to the government and everybody who is at a certain maybe age level, they receive an income, just a check from the government. They just receive a check from the government. And with that comes with pros and cons. But overall, I wanted to kind of open with that just as an idea, don't leave the video yet. I'm going to talk about some of the pros and cons. There's a lot more pros than you may think, but there's one major con that is going to mess this up. There's also another con that, to me, doesn't really exist. People just hear basic income and they just run to like laziness and all that. No, that's not the real concern. That's not the real concern with this idea. I'm going to get to it. But I just want to kind of open up and say, this is not a bad idea. And this is an idea that liberals and conservatives could actually get behind if they really just get out the initial notion or perception of universal basic income. So with that, let me present my case. Now, I see three pros and three cons here. Really pay attention. We got the pros first. First and foremost, let's open up the door for potentially less government spending. Less spending on the welfare state, on welfare programs. Now, right now, the government spends about a trillion, about a trillion dollars on different welfare programs. 70% of that's Medicaid, 30% is other things like unemployment, housing, etc. So yeah, it's been a little bit over a trillion. It's a lot of money to spend. Now, my idea is this, from the age of 1865, you get that check. Now, that is about 200 million Americans right now, about 200 million Americans, which actually comes out to a check of $450 a month for each person in that window. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but I think there's different ways you can slice it, different ways you can open it. Now, first thing is, you can leave the top 20% earners completely out of this. I don't think that's a bad idea. No, you, you guys pay taxes, you know, a little bit of, there goes your trickle down economics right there. You just don't get, get any of the buyback, but hey, those in the top 20%, how much do they earn? You know, hundreds of millions of dollars, which you, what an extra two, three hundred thousand a month gonna do? Not gonna change a thing. Vice versa, you take what you don't give to the top, and those people that are near the poverty line, thirteen, fifteen thousand dollars, maybe, you know, below that, making less than a thousand dollars a month, yeah, you give them a little bit of a bump. Give them, maybe give them a little bit more than that. And you can even section it off to first quartile seven hundred a month, second quartile four hundred a month, third quartile maybe just a hundred. Not a lot. You don't really, you don't really get to experience it. Fourth quartile, you get nothing. There you go. You have a split like that, and you can actually you can actually maneuver the numbers to where you actually spend less on the welfare state than what you're spending now. Now it's not a lot less. It's not going to be terribly less. I mean, at least to their eyes. So ten billion dollars less, or twenty billion dollars to the average person, is a lot. To the government on that federal budget, it's not the largest in the world. But you compound that over time. It can be a lot of money saved, not just for one year, but 10 years. So that's the first pro in my, my opinion. Less spending on the welfare programs, less government spending. Don't forget, you have to pay employees. You can potentially have less employees to pay as well. Just an idea. Second is maybe more of a, a liberal kind of hipster idea. It's higher satisfaction in life. I mean, if you're one thing that people just don't pay attention to is underemployment. There's a lot of underemployment. There's a lot of people who have jobs they really 
don't want. They or don't not really happy. There's a lot of people that aren't happy with their jobs. I mean, what is it? Two thirds of people aren't happy with where they're working, at least in samples and in, um, in surveys. That's a lot of people. Two out of three. I mean, two person both to your left and your right is not happy with their job. I mean, how can you how can you change that? One thing is if you just give them a little bit of income, just a little bit of hope, you'll be surprised. Some for some people that's enough for them to take the risk to kind of try to switch jobs or take a lower paying job, but they enjoy more. What is it in? There's some fields that notoriously they pay a lot, but people don't really like their jobs. I'm not going to name them because I'm not going to knock them. But you know and I know there's a couple of fields out there that you're in it just for the money. And that is a problem. Life isn't all about the money, man. So if you don't have to worry about it as much, you still need to worry, but you don't need to worry about it as much, then yeah, you can go pursue other things. Maybe putting in overtime isn't as big of a deal. I mean, just these little things that can lead to less underemployment and higher satisfaction in life. And also, my third point, which is the biggest point, more innovation and potentially more entrepreneurship in the economy. I am one of those believers that entrepreneurs really drive the economy. I mean, people come up with different ideas, trying to become more productive, turn one input to multiple outputs, always going back and forth, creative destruction. These are all ideas I really believe in. Uh, it's the economic side of me coming out. It's ideas that are truly to my heart. And just a little bit, you'll be surprised at what people can do with just a couple hundred dollars a month. They can really stretch that out. They can go a long way. Change ideas just, I mean, you really take the risk. You really jump out on certain things. And for some people, they're underemployed. So others, they really need the money for, I mean, really need a job for money. And if you just give them a little bit of boost, and on top of that little bit of boost, some people maybe they have a side gig and they can focus a little bit more on a side gig. Some people might be enough to go from full time to part time, others from part time to none, and just focus on their own business ideas, which could actually lead to more entrepreneurship and really drive growth of this economy. Those are my pros. Those, that's my arguments for it. Oh, there's some arguments against universal basic income. Some I'm not as big. I don't think it's big as a deal. There's one major hit that can change everything. So let's talk about those. The first one, and probably the most obvious, is decrease in work ethic. If you want to give people a check just for living, they're not going to work harder, right? I think that's BS. That's not going to happen. No way, no how. I will admit, you're going to have your few. You're going to have some, they're just going to cut it out. But for every one person that decides, eh, I'm just going to stay home, I'll just chill out, collect my check, I don't know, play video games. For one person that's doing that, there's, I bet another person that's out there trying new ideas, programming things in a different way, um, trying to get their business off the ground. There's both a pro and con to that. And even if it's 10 to one, or 20 to one, or 100 to one, having more entrepreneurs, I'm, I'm willing to make that sacrifice. I'm willing to make that sacrifice to get more entrepreneurs and innovators in the door. Just let it, let it happen. I mean, it's, I don't think it's going to get so much to the point that people all around are just going to stop working. I know I'm not. And I know you probably not either if you're watching this channel. So, I first and foremost, let's stop the brakes on that. The work ethic idea is completely not going to happen. Not 100% is not going to happen. So don't worry about that, as we have bigger fish to fry. One of those bigger fish is actually inflation. Now, in America, for my lifetime at least, inflation has not been an issue. It really hasn't been an issue since the 80s. Now, when it becomes an issue, it can be really bad. I mean, you got just, all you gotta do is go below us and look what happened to a lot of these um, South American countries because of rapid hyperinflation or go to Japan and look at deflation, they got the lost decade. I mean, we're in a pretty good spot, inflation-wise. But if you give a person an extra $400 a month, 
Who's to say that in the next 10, 15 years, all the prices are just going to catch up to it? It's going to cost $300, $400, $500 more, for example, to stay in a hotel. Or um, that's two, three hundred dollars $300 less in your pocket for working. So that's an idea to think about. That's something that's real. And the best way to me to go around it is to pay the universal basic income, actually just pay it to a, a great inflation rate. So um, you got the consumer price index, maybe you have a trillion 24 month like, view of it. You know, average it out and you just track it. And every year, January 1st, the new number is what you grow, your initial base you buy. So I mean, that's a, that's a way to get around it. Well, one of the better ways to get around it. It's not a perfect solution, but it's good enough. Now the real thing that can really kill this is healthcare costs. Now like I mentioned before, of that 1.1 trillion dollars, 70% of that is Medicaid. Welfare stuff more on the healthcare side than anything else. And the crazy bet you're essentially making here is, I'm betting I will live healthy enough and not have to go to the hospital or or not go to the emergency room, no ER. I'm basically making that switch off. So I'm going to see the money in my hand, in my pocket, versus signing up for a medical program, signing up for Medicaid. That is something that's very scary and hard to really wrap your mind around. One of the better ways I think we can get around it is people at the lower, near the poverty line, you might still offer them some Medicaid benefits, but you kind of restrict it. You don't have as many. I mean, there's some states, they will, they're very liberal in the benefits they will give you. So you have to cut some of that. But in exchange, more people will get universal income. They'll get something to start off with. So that's the unique trade-off. And that's where I think most people get hung up with the most. That's the real problem with this. It's not work ethic. That's not a real thing to me. The inflation thing we can work around. The healthcare costs are a real downside. But if we can figure that part out, I think we got something here. United States, you guys need to really consider this universal basic income idea. It's not as crazy as you would think. And that's what I have for you today. First and foremost, if you think this idea is totally off skis, this will never work, I've lost my mind, I jumped off the pin, please let me know in the comment section. I would love to debate, love to talk about this idea some more. Michael E.J. here to bring you different ideas in finance, business, and life. So until the next time, think about UBI. I'll see you soon.